Hi, Victoria. Can you hear me okay? I can, Alex. How are you doing? <laughs> Thank you so much for being willing to um, experiment. This is this the second one of these sessions that we've done. So it's a little bit of experiment on this side, but hopefully it's going to be helpful for you and others um, as well. Do you want to just start by asking your question? And then it can be a bit back and forth. It doesn't need to be you just ask a question, yep. I answer and we hang up. It's nice to have a bit more of a conversational um, discussion about it. But yeah, let's start with your question. Okay, so what I wanted to ask was, how do you stop that negative spiral when you, so say if I might have a couple of good days, and then I get up the next morning, and I'm having a bad day, so I might have a symptom that particularly troubles me. How do I stop myself then Googling symptoms or worrying about the other symptoms coming on, which then tends to bring them on because I'm worrying about them coming on? How do I nip that in the bud when I wake up and I'm feeling rough when I haven't the two days before? So great question. And just to give me a tiny bit of context, am I right in thinking that you've you've had long COVID just so I, I know what we're talking about? Yes, I have. Yeah. And for, for how long? Uh, since last March. Okay. So, so so sort of 15 months or so. Yeah. And where, where are you at? Just to give me a little bit of the range of where you were and where you are now. How, how are you doing so far? Um, I'm doing better. Um, got lots of symptoms of calm down or I've been able to get a handle on finding medication that works for them. But the remaining things seem to be neurological. So um, insomnia on and off, um, nerve pain, um, tremors inside the body, um, that kind of thing that I think are once I get one or the gut might react. And then once one thing happens, especially with the gut, the other things seem to come on. So I think what's left is probably the kind of thing that you deal with where I have one symptom and the rest is my mental reaction is triggering yeah. physical reactions, like a remembered response almost. So it's sort of calming down over the time, but it's still, it's still there. It's still, yeah. it's like a vicious circle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And enormously frustrating as well. Right. Because when you have a few days that things are going better, often what happens is memory is state dependent. So we remember all the other times we felt good and there's the sense of relief and it's like, Oh my God, I'm, I'm finally, I'm getting there. And then when you have that bad day or that bad few days, it feels, I think it can feel almost all the more crushing for the fact you've had a better few days because hopes got up and expectations got up and it's almost like getting a taste of freedom and then having it taken away again. So I, I think firstly, just the, the very fact that you're able to ask the question in the way that you're asking it shows that you have some awareness. So it shows that you recognize that when you're having a bad day or two, it is most likely just a bad day or two. But I think probably what happens in that bad day or two is it's very easy for your mind then to snowball and to, just like in the good times, we remember all the good periods. In the down period, we remember all the down periods, right? So we yeah. swing from being almost overly positive. I'm doing great. It's all, it's all, it's all sorted. I'm going to you know, get back to normal life to it's all terrible. I'm never going to recover. It's never going to get better. Right. Yes. Yeah. I almost so, get, I get the good times. I almost get too excited about the good times instead of staying on an even keel, which I think would help. It's almost, yeah, yeah it's, it, it's exciting. So you get carried away. Yeah. And then you get so down then. so I, I think the positive is it's its own sign of progress that you're dealing with this stage of the recovery process which I often say to people is in some ways actually more difficult and more frustrating than the stage before where you just feel crap most of the time. And from time to time you have a good day, but you sort of don't even believe it because it's, it's kind of shrouded in so many days that you've not felt good. So the fact that you're starting to get those tastes of freedom is a really positive sign. And just to normalize, it really sucks. It's really, <laughs> it, it, you know, it, it's sort of like, giving a giving a child anything they want to eat on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday and on a Tuesday and Thursday they have to eat I don't know salmonella or, or some like really I'm not, I'm not that thing we used to get at school that really horrible was it was it 
Was salmonella, was that, that's a disease. <laughs> was, anyway, it was that right, <laughs> that semolina, that was, that's what it was. Semolina. Um, <laughs> oh dear, it's one of those days. Um, <laughs> but it's that torture and that frustration. So the fact that that's happening is positive. The fact that you see it's happening, I think is also positive. And I think it's worth normalizing that this is a stage for many people it is an actual stage on the recovery process. And then what starts to happen is the highs become a little bit higher, the lows become less low, you have more highs and less lows, you have longer periods of highs and shorter periods of lows, and it gradually morphs the point that just like before, it was low most of the time and you didn't believe the little highs that came in, it becomes the opposite, it becomes high all the time, most of the time, and you have the little dips, but they don't have traction because they're surrounded by so much positivity and so much progress. Um, and I think it's important to remember that having a bad day or a bad few days doesn't mean that what you're doing isn't working. It may well mean what you're doing is working so well that you got a bit carried away and did a bit too much, or there's just natural ebbs and flows in the body's rhythms and cycles. And we don't know where the edges are until we hit the edges. And that's the, that's the other frustrating thing. When you're making progress, the frustration is that when we just feel crap the whole time, we know how much we can do. We know where the levels are, so you get a stability. Yeah. Energy starts to come in, and it's, it's, it's frustrating for the reasons we've talked about. But also what happens is you don't actually know where your edges are until you hit your edges, and then you might have to pay a few days paying the price of having hit the edges. So that is very much a part of the healing process. Thank you. Well, that's good to know. That's good to hear. Yeah. And then you had a, you had a, a part two to your question, uh, Victoria, if, if, you, if you want to ask that as well. Um, I was asking about Googling symptoms, you know, say, so if I'm trying to look for, for help for treatment supplements and things like that, is that something that is best just not to do when you're trying to recover using, the, using your program? Is it best just to stay away from that and just trust the process? Does that hold, does it sort of hold back progress? You know, it's a, it's a tricky one because for many, I think the reason why you're asking the question is you're probably noticing that there's a way you can do it that actually aggravates symptoms because mm -hmm. you go down the rabbit hole of Google or YouTube or whatever, and you almost overwhelm yourself more, wire up your nervous system more. And, and also um, going down the Dr. Google path, people can go down some really odd pathways. And you know, we have people come in taking supplements. There's absolutely no way they should be taking that made complete sense with Dr. Google, but make no sense with their actual lab test results. So there's definitely an argument for being mindful about it. Equally, you probably wouldn't have found our program if you hadn't gone on Google. I wouldn't yeah. have found the things that helped me on my recovery path. We didn't have Google in those days, but going to the library and reading books and reaching out to people. So I think the problem, the issue is not researching the condition and researching potential pathways. The, the question is, what state are you in when you're doing it? So if you're in a calm healing state and you're grounded and you're in the moment and you're following a, a measured <clears throat> sort of pathway of exploration, I think that that can be appropriate. If what's happening is you're getting further and further away from being in a calm healing state and getting more and more wired and triggered, then it's not helpful. The other warning signs are, is it consuming you, A, in how much time you're spending doing it, but also when you're not doing it, you're still thinking about it. So it needs to be compartmentalized in a, I'm going to spend some time doing some research. It might be that you get recommended a supplement, for example, and you're interested. You want to go and find out what the benefits of that supplement are. Perhaps you want to read reviews of other people that have taken that supplement. So it, I don't think that's necessarily a problem. It's a problem if it consumes you. It's a problem if it wires your nervous system. And it's a problem if you start self-medicating with all the right intentions in a way that actually isn't ultimately helpful for your, for your healing path. What, do you do you feel you have a sense of where those boundaries are? I mean, again, it's it's a sort of question that suggests you probably do, but 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 I'm I'm curious. Yes, I I I'm aware that I tend to do the googling on the days when I'm not good. 
yeah. which is probably from listening to you is probably where I'm making the mistake. I'm best to do that on the days when I feel okay and I'm calm about it rather than the days when I'm panic looking because I have another symptom and I'm not sure what it is. So that's perhaps the best approach um, and maybe to restrict the time. And probably on the good days, it's the last thing you want to do, right? Because you don't want to be thinking about it. So I actually want to say something else. I, I think what you're doing, and it's a, it's a very common thing that people do, on those low days, you're trying to think your way to a feeling of safety. You're yeah. trying to reassure yourself by reading enough positive reviews of a, of a certain treatment pathway or enough things about a certain supplement of the benefits or find a new piece of the jigsaw, which then explains why you feel so crap on that day to then go, now I can relax because I, I, yeah. I know that I'm okay. Yeah. The problem is that when we try to think our way to a feeling of safety, mm -hmm. we become more kind of wired and our mind goes faster. The feeling of safety is in your body, not in your mind. So it's almost by definition of trying to find answers on a, on a cognitive level. The danger is that one actually gets further away from what they actually need. So what, what I would suggest is on those days, really work on using any tools you've got to calm your system, to surrender to what's happening. It can be helpful to reassure yourself. And sometimes what can be helpful is on those good days, write a little letter or a few paragraphs about how you're feeling how well you're doing to be able to read those to read that on the on the low days which is probably more helpful than going down lots of rabbit holes of, of research which is probably just going to cause more more stress in those moments yeah, that's that's the great idea writing it down on the day i do feel good is a good idea to remind myself that that's how i will feel on other days yeah, yeah. any any other questions related to this um no, I don't. No, I. I mean, when you were in your recovery, did you did you mainly do it through the program? Did you use supplements as well? And so the program no. didn't exist, which sucked. <laughs> <laughs> the but yes, combination of supplements, combination of psychology tools, uh, combination yeah. of meditation and yoga for me was also helpful. Um, and I think everyone's jigsaw is different. But the thing that I would say is. It's very easy when you're still suffering and you're still having some, you know, some really difficult days to think this is never going to end and never going to change. But the fact that you've made, by the sounds of it, the progress that you have already made over the last 15 months and the fact that you're really making sense of it absolutely suggests that you're really on the right track and you will get there. And it's just it's a little bit like. If you remember being at school and and doing exams, like doing, you know, if you did GCSEs or A-levels, and it, it seems like the most important thing in the world, like all you think about at that time. And then you get you, decades later and you can't even remember anything that you like. If you had to sit the test tomorrow, you'd probably fail because you wouldn't remember any of the stuff that you revised <laughs> at the time that was like the most important thing in the world, right? So yeah. there's also a contextual thing that when you're in it, of course, it, it feels so it's hard to believe that it's going to change and it's hard to see life beyond it. And yet when you come out the other side and time passes, it'll be hard to even remember the things that feel so consuming at this point in time. And it's just having that perspective, I think can sometimes be helpful as well. Yeah. a longer perspective. And I think that's what that I need to, the, the stepping back and thinking, just give it time and let the, the process work is is what I need to do rather than just focus on it. And that's what your point about meditation and not focusing on it, not working every day, has really helped me because I, I do tend to do it and then I think, oh, that wouldn't dreadfully, you know, I couldn't switch off. But having that perspective that think of it as a longer process has really, has really helped. For what it's worth, having meditated now for 23 years, um, not obviously religiously every day, but having a pretty regular practice, there are still days I sit down to meditate and I just go, excuse my language, but fuck it, today's not going to be a good day. And sometimes just stop because I think it's pointless. And other times it's just a real struggle. And of course, other times it's beautiful and, it, and, it, and, it's, and it's a wonderful experience. But it's, it, you really just have to remember that the body and the mind and the nervous system and our emotional body have their different cycles and patterns and things that are happening. And if you put the work in and you do the practice and you're gentle with yourself and your patient, it's the cumulative growth and benefit that you're really working on. And, and that ultimately has a massive impact over time. Yeah. 
Thank you. I think I'd lost perspective of that until I watched your videos. And then I realised that that's what I needed to do was see it as a longer process, not keep being so impatient about recovery. I think the other thing that I would say is remember that the things that you're learning through this experience have enormous value on the other side of this experience. Like you will, I'm sure over the last 15 months, reassess lots of things in your life that you wouldn't have done before. And I know you wouldn't have chosen to do it this way, but the fact that you have had that time is going to be a real gift in decades to come. Thank you. That's a nice thought. I, yeah, I have had plenty of time to think about things. And I think you learn to what you value in life, what's important. Right. When Before that, when you were rushing around, you, you didn't get the chance to focus on that. So, yeah. yeah. Well, look, thank you so much, Victoria, for being willing to be part of our little experiments here. Um, I hope it's been helpful. Do keep, keep us updated with how you're doing. I'd love to hear how things continue to thank unfold. You. And you're doing great. Keep going. Thank you very much. And thank you for including me. I appreciate it. Brilliant. My pleasure. Love you all. Bye-bye.